it's turkey time. <laughs> so uh, not only am I excited about that, right? Thanksgiving is the Super Bowl for, for uh, culinarians, right? We're, we're super excited to fire up these grills and get the birds rolling. And speak of rolling, uh, Kamada Joe has come out with a new piece of kit. It is called the Jotisserie Basket Kit. Uh, you've got options to run a spit rod all the way through if you like, or you can install these really cool pieces that allow you to put this basket uh, without the spit rod through. You've got an option to have this kind of coped side, or you've got a flat basket. Okay, so we've really got to make up our minds what's going to work best for each individual cook. Today I'm cooking about a nine and a half pound turkey breast. Now we're gonna spatchcock this breast. And I think once we cut it, then we should examine it and see whether we wanna use the flat side or the cope side in this new chotisserie basket kit. I'm a huge fan of turkey. I, I don't know why we don't cook it more times. Uh, you know, you see it down in Texas on, on the menu all the time. Um, but this is just the turkey breast. Just one option we're gonna give to you this holiday season. We'll do a whole bird as well. Um, so you want to analyze or analyze you want to you want to check out and make sure there's not any of those gravy packets or giblets or anything in the cavity before we start cutting out the backbone notice how there's not much just this right here we're going to cut this out so we can get it flat you can use kitchen shears as well if you're more comfortable no problems there and we'll save this for stock now we're getting into that neck portion just trim a little bit and there we go we're gonna hit that keel bone. So I hit the keel bone with a knife so that I can flatten this out a little bit. And that's gonna help us with even cooking. You can see that woody keel bone there. That was kind of the breast bone. And notice we're kind of taking out this cavity, making it flatter. Not only will that help us cook more evenly, but it'll speed up the cook in general, okay? Take out that air gap a little bit. And we've got pretty good coverage here. I wish that it had a little more coverage, but no worries. Now with our hands, we're gonna start working underneath the skin to create separation for our seasoning, herbs, and butter to go into. However, you can get in there and make some pockets. And I think the first thing I wanna sneak in there is a little unsalted butter. So I've got some room temperature butter, and I'm just gonna stuff that and then use a little positive pressure and karate chop it on up in there. <laughs> yeah. I like that, it's a pro move right there. Pro move, pro move. Charge extra for those tips. Get rid of one of these gloves and go ahead and grab the seasoning. Today we've chosen two different seasonings, Lane's Barbecue Brisket, heavy on the salt, heavy on the pepper. And secondary, we're gonna go with a Lane's Barbecue Honey Sriracha. So this is gonna be a dry basted honey sriracha turkey breast. It's gonna be fabulous. Get in there. And you can do this the night before if you want to. If you want to season this up and kind of dry brine it uh, by putting that heavy salt seasoning, that is just going to make it all the better. But I find by putting that butter underneath the skin and it's going to be rotating, it's going to be self-basting, uh, this is a great bird for me. Feel free to inject if you like as well. All right, while we're here, I've chosen, you know, the trilogy, if you will. Uh, we've got a little bit of rosemary, a little bit of sage, a little bit of fresh thyme. Uh, it's gonna roast thoroughly enough to break down the fibers on the stem, so I just shove those on in. Oh yeah. Don't forget in here too, look at that. I kind of neglected that. So let's get back on our honey sriracha for the sweet heat. That is a beautiful bird. Now we've got to decide which basket are we gonna use, right? Are we gonna use a flat basket? Are we gonna use the round basket? My thought, uh, and put in the comment section down below what you think, but my thought is to use the round basket and cinch it as tight as we can go. See, that's pretty large cavity right there, or whatever you'd like to call it, but we've got the ability to kind of pinch and crunch down a little bit. So we can make this smaller and keep that shape. And I think too, you know, about an hour into our cook, we sneak some acorn squash in there. We sneak some large pieces of cut carrot, onion, celery, uh, and let it kind of roast, almost like a root roast. And as this begins to break down and render out, it's seasoning those vegetables and what a platter we can make with this, with this turkey breast. So that's my thought. Tell me if you would use the flat piece of the accessory or also go with the coat shape. You know, we could even do a flat on one side and a coped on the other. That might be, that might be the ticket. 
See, I'm glad, team, I'm glad we talked about this. This is great. That's exactly what we're gonna do. And I'm pushing it all the way down so that's holding it. All right, let's do a test spin. <laughs> let's take a look at our fire before we install the basket. Let me tell you what I'm seeing. Let's, let's d dive in here. So we've got a great fire going on, but notice all this black here. So our charcoal is not fully engaged. I'm gonna use my ash tool and disrupt that pile so that new angles, new sides are getting ashed and embered up. Also, we need to bring some of that energy from that good fire to the dome before we install it, okay? So let's agitate the coals. So dome is going down. We're gonna swivel that control tower all the way open. Let this dome accept some of that heat, some of that energy burn out about 50% of our charcoal pile. We want to stabilize it about 300, 325, maybe 350. Uh, so we'll start playing around with our control tower. I like to, at this point, have my draft door almost completely closed. Maybe leave it open a quarter of an inch. We're at a great temperature, we want to stabilize. So let's go ahead and damper down the control tower to the second line, all right? There's four, we want to be on the second line. Let's go ahead and open up and take a look at the charcoal pile. This is looking great. We're banked to the back. We've got about 50% of what we, uh, what we started with. And I've got a little piece of hickory, just a little bit. I don't like to smoke a whole lot when we're talking about poultry and skin on. It makes the skin kind of rubbery, but a little smoke goes a long way. So we're gonna bury the small wood chunk in the hottest portion of the coals. Now that we've got combustion, let's go ahead and install our basket. Turn the jotisserie motor on, let's close the dome, and we're off to the races. So in true recipe fashion, we're, we're you know three quarters of the way through this cook right now, and it's begun to rain. <laughs> <laughs> but that's not gonna stop us, right? Little, we got a little overhang here. Uh, it's time to get into our mirepoix. Now that, I say mirepoix, just a fancy word for, uh, you know, carrots, onions, and celery. Open this basket here in just a second, uh, all while trying to dodge this rain. Turkey's got great color all around. We're looking at about 120 degrees internal temperature. Now let's go ahead and open that basket, throw it in there, put it back in, and finish it off. Looks good to me. How cool is that? I'm still liking the amount of uh, embers that we've got going on. If we were losing too much heat, we could add a couple more small pieces and incorporate them. Uh, but I'm loving what I'm seeing. Great color. Uh, again, we're at about 120 degrees internal temperature right now. We're gunning for about 160 to 165. Uh, so probably another 35, 40 minutes. The vegetables will be nice and tender. The bird will be perfectly cooked. Then we're going to eat. If we didn't have enough heat, add a couple more pieces of charcoal, okay? Increase the draft a little bit by opening that draft door, opening the control tower up just a little bit, uh, but we're solid. I like where we're going. Probably another 25, 30 minutes, and we should be soft vegetables and internal temperature on the bird, probably like 160. It's right where we wanna be. All right, the rains hold up a little bit. We've got about 10 minutes to go on this cook. I wanna give it another dry baste with the honey sriracha. Oh yeah. Wow, that much? Yeah, you go hard. I mean, some of it's gonna fall off, you know what I mean? You gotta, you gotta play, you gotta hedge your bets. And it is time. Let's open up the lid. Look at that, here it comes, here it comes. All right, remember, you gotta stop the motor before you take it off. And that is a stunner. Absolutely gorgeous, 162 degrees inside. Let's go ahead and take it off, set it on the table. Let's go ahead and get into it. This thing is smelling fabulous. The dry base of the honey sriracha made a really cool crust. Uh, the vegetables are looking stunning. There's something about the majesty of a bird that just brings everybody together. It might be the one time that the whole entire family sits down around the table. And uh, I'll tell you, this basket and the jotisserie certainly added uh, to the enjoyment of that cook because that was so fun to watch it. And look how juicy that is. It just basted as that butter melted, as the seasoning melted into it. Look at that crust. Now, of course, we need to let it rest. Um, and I'm gonna leave all of this vegetable here so that it stays warm. We got nice radiant heat here. And then we're gonna transfer those vegetables to the platter and start slicing off. I can take my eyes off of it. 
Like it's got <laughs> it's got the it's got the smoke, it's got the glaze. This is a no brine necessary turkey right here. Uh, I didn't cut into it, and I'm starting to wax poetically about it. So that's that's how that's how good this thing looks. We're gonna let it rest for about five to ten minutes. Maybe we should go twenty. I'm not waiting twenty minutes. I'm just not gonna do it. So uh, you know, I can say in the recipe down below, wait twenty minutes. I'm waiting. I'm waiting seven. I'm gonna. I'm gonna. We're waiting seven. You just don't get a self-basting glaze like that any other way. Any other way, right? Whoa. We, Whoa. We, 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 take it easy. Uh, you know, we weren't mopping it. We weren't. We weren't doing this, that, and the other. This is just straight up on its own perfection. Now for the main event. Uh, I like to trim off one side of the keel bone and then the other side. So we'll start by that natural line. It kind of gives us a road map. And then once we've reached, I'll just kind of turn that. Oh my gosh, it looks so good. Turn that knife and it pops it right off. It's still hot though. We're going to detach it from the bone here. Cut right through. Up. Look at that. And why would you wait for one time a year to do this? I mean, this, till we eat chicken enough, right? Why wouldn't you go turkey four times a month? And I like to cut it about this thick. I don't know what that is, but you know, between an eighth of an inch and a quarter of an inch, just to make it easier for folks to eat it. Notice by cutting it that thin, we're getting a thin layer of the herbs that are underneath there as well. We've got all that seasoning under the skin. Look at the color of that skin too. That is a wonderful looking turkey though. I'll tell you, if you're looking for a way to diversify what you've done in the past, the rotisserie turkey is the ticket. I mean, it doesn't get any better than that. Two things right off the bat. Delicious, nostalgia. That's a fabulous bird. That, that is just an absolute stunner. Um, you know, keeping it simple, the Jotisserie basket set allows you to have a lot of fun. And there's the entertainment value of it too, right? Anytime somebody wants to come outside, boom, open that thing up and you see it turning and then you get a little dry base going on there. It keeps getting you outside, out of, out of the house. Uh, I, I love it, I'm a big fan. So this is my first time using that basket uh, and putting one together, couldn't have been any simpler. Folks, from our backyard to yours, cheers and happy grilling. And also all the things. I always forget to say all the things. Don't forget to hit the subscribe button, uh, notifications. Do leave us a comment. Let us know the best turkey you ever had off the grill. Uh, and folks, just thanks so much. Have a happy Thanksgiving. Cheers to you.